Hello, everybody. Welcome to this afternoon's session uh, with as part of the Harassus Asia uh, meeting. Uh, our session is on cluster entrepreneurship and overcoming the negative impact of COVID, if there is a negative impact to be overcome. Uh, that's for discussion as well. Um, but according to our program, the intensification of COVID has brought new social challenges, migrant workers, visa problems, and other challenges to entrepreneurs within the vibrant tech clusters, often dependent, which are often dependent on informal meetings. Um, how can innovation develop post COVID? Will Asian solutions be superior as they face COVID earlier? <laughs> Will their solutions overcome illiquid financing? So many questions. And to um, answer those questions today, I'm joined by an expert panel. Let me just tell you who they are and I'll get them to introduce themselves uh, in, in a moment. Um, Sunday Ojojo, who's the co-founder of BioDry to Energy, and he's actually sitting in St. Garland in Switzerland. Uh, Shailendra Goswami, who's the chairman and managing director of the Push Karaj Group. In, he's in Pune in India. Uh, Rajiv Luther is joining us. Um, Andre is not with us quite yet. So I'll come back to uh, Rajiv uh, a little later on. Andrea Moni. Andrea is, with, uh, is the co-founder and managing partner of Blue Spark Hub in Singapore. And Kristen Narayan, who is the co-founder of Engage Innovate, uh, and he's in Norway. So I am Deborah Biber. I'm a board member of the Pacific Basin Economic Council and the founder and chief executive of Blue Moon Advisory. So that's all of us. And I'd now like to go um, in order of the list to uh, Sunday first. Um, Sunday, if you could tell us a little bit about who you are and what this topic means to you. Yes, privilege to be here, gentlemen, everybody. My name is Prince Sunday. I'm from actually Nigeria. And I was born into a family of uh, 10 children. And uh, my great grandfather was a former king in Nigeria. So at the moment, I'm living in Switzerland and I'm working with the BioDry to Energy based in London and here in Switzerland. For me, the COVID is uh, a very important, um, I would say uh, the COVID has caught us on their wrong feet. As I said, the second lockdown is already here taking place in some of the countries here. And I think this pandemic is going to remain with us for a long time. We just have to find a way, a strategy to live with this because we saw panicking everywhere and solutions, many kind of solutions out there. I saw many people uh, really confuse fears all over the places. Actually, we're having a great problem, but this problem, we can tackle this problem when we remain calm. Everything we need in this kind of a situation is just to remain calm and be focused. Calm and be focused. And that will determine how we move along with this pandemic. Thank you. We cannot hear you. You have now. to unmute. Deborah, you need to unmute yourself. Unmute. Apologies, everybody. Um, last technical glitch, promise. Um, our focus, of course, is on entrepreneurship and on clusters and overcoming COVID. Um, and so I'd like to now, uh, it's my pleasure actually to, to introduce, uh, Shailendra Goswami. Shailendra, if you could introduce yourself. Yeah, I'll restrict, uh, uh, to my introduction. The opening remarks will take it on later. My name is Shailendra Goswami. I live in Pune city, close to Mumbai in India. I have been an engineer and plus a postgraduate in management from one of the premier institutes here. And I hold 43 years of experience, 15 years of which in corporate sector and 28 years in business. And presently, I'm the chairman and managing director of Pushkaraj Group, comprising of four companies 
uh, having uh, objectives on uh, cost reduction, uh, global sourcing for which we have network in 16 countries, then technology forecasting uh, 10 years from now, what all technologies will be there in different engineering fields that we do. We do management consulting. Uh, we do local system integration, engineering services, and IT services. And this uh, is distributed in four uh, companies uh, that we have it. And the entire uh, group uh, heads uh, for these four companies are my second generation, two daughters, two son-in-laws, and a son. So six of us are managing this entire group. Uh, I'm sitting and guiding all that second generation uh, which is uh, trying to take on the mantle. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Shalawin. Um, Sharinda. Uh, Andrea. Okay. Hello, everyone. Thanks so much for um, having me. As uh, My name is Andrea Monni. As, uh, as Deborah said, I'm based in Singapore. I've been, been based in, in Asia since 2004. And uh, what, we, what we do with our company, we help Italian companies uh, establish and develop uh, their business in, in Asia. We have two, I would say we have two main verticals. One is working with uh, medium to big Italian companies that are looking to, to expand their business in the region. And this is a, a very much classic uh, business development work. And uh, and our the other vertical is uh, working with uh, smaller companies, innovative companies that have uh, have technology or uh, or uh, either technology or a business proposition that is innovative and um, and they're looking to scale in the region. And uh, and uh, we have them uh, either either finding partners or. Uh, or investors in uh, in the obviously the past year as uh, as found as uh, rather un unprepared as I guess uh, everyone was in uh, in this kind of uh, in this kind of situations uh, if, uh, if you think about Schumpeter it's always a creative distraction as uh, there are there are challenges but there are also opportunities what uh, what we need uh, what is happening now I think it's time that we need to, to move from a uh, from a sort of a panic approach to a more risk-based approach that uh, that can uh, that can help uh, imagine the situation and avoiding uh, uh, and uh, avoiding being uh, avoiding for some countries or, or regions being left out from the recovery. Thank you. Um, Christian, I just seem to have lost you. Yeah. Okay, are you with us? Have you, is your video on? I think he's uh, it's been it's, dropped. His connection been, dropped. His connection is gone. Yeah. Ah. His okay. connection is gone. Okay. So wait just the, okay. So we'll wait till he comes back on um, for Christian. Now, I, I'm interested just because uh, our topic is cluster entrepreneurship. So given that the, the basic premise is that we are not able to cluster together because of COVID um, and those relationships that were around um, the entrepreneurial ecosystem have been disrupted, if you like, um, Andrea, uh, how how is this affecting what you're doing and what your how has it affected what you've done and what you're working on, and how are you future proofing that? No, as I said, it's, um, it's, it's so it hasn't affected yet so much, but it's starting to, especially because uh, if you think about it, uh, me I'm based in Singapore and Deborah, you were based in Hong Kong, so um, so so we were based in two in two very small places that uh, that made uh, made themselves relevant being open and uh, and accept and uh, being uh, i would say like a neutral neutral playground for uh, for people from from all over from all over the countries <laughs> right now what hong kong and singapore are doing it's uh, basically a total closure and uh, so so far i think it's has worked because uh, more or less everybody was closed eh? But mm -hmm. uh, if you start looking at other uh, geographies, as I was mentioning, it's uh, I, I don't want to say it's back, it's back in business, but I would say almost back in business. 
Because if you, a friend of mine, for instance, just came back from China and he told me, listen, if you, go to China, if you were an alien going to, going to China, you would think COVID never happened. Because it's, uh, in China, yeah. it was, things are almost back to normal. If you look at uh, Europe, in, uh, besides the, the lockdown that are, are happening on and off, if you look at, uh, if you look at business, more or less it's going, it's going forward, uh, in, a in a, I don't want to say in a normal way, but almost in a, in a almost normal way. That if you if you need to travel, you can travel over Europe. You don't have any issues. If you want to meet someone, you can meet someone. While, for instance, in Singapore, we are facing a lot of issues with, uh, with the, the restrictions. So we are having um, we having clients that uh, uh, that the projects are. Um, I mean, it's a, very, a severe danger not to not not to be delivered because they can't come to Singapore, or they can or they can and they can send their they can send the technician to Singapore. And right now, there's no formal way to to, to, to arrange it. If, if somebody is coming from Italy, he cannot come to Singapore. There's no way. There's no right. official. Way. So it's uh, and this is gonna st- and uh, this is gonna start affecting uh, affecting I think uh, the um, the relevance of Singapore and Hong Kong uh, um, if if these things continues and uh, and, uh, and the, the administration here doesn't take steps in order to to manage to manage the situation with a as I say with a more uh, pragmatic and the risk uh, risk based approach rather than a, rather than a general generalized. Um, uh, generalized uh, closure of the fro- closure of the borders. Okay, but within so your your clients within the sector within your 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 cluster, if you like, <laughs> yes. um, are they able to connect with each other easily? No, if if you look at Zoom, yes, it's easy. And <laughs> but uh, the moment, uh, uh, but for instance, if they need to if they need to set, they, if they need to install a new. If they need to, to, to install a new in, in industrial plant, uh, it's uh, it's rather complicated to do it on a distance, especially because the um, in Singapore, for instance, they are not available the are not available the qualified technicians to do the to do the job. Right. So where are those qualified technicians? Oh, this, this usually is a, for instance, if you look at um, uh, this example is on the shipping industry, and uh, in the shipping industry, uh, as in the oil and gas, there's a uh, that there are, uh, there are there are people that they travel all over the world and they, they go where they need it. And mm-hmm. in this case, the, the, the people they need to bring in, they are, they are coming from five or six different countries. Right, right, right. And this, this is a bit of an old uh, is a bit of an old economy example, but uh, but it's um, is this is going to also affect uh, technology innovation sector. Okay. The, 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 this example is a bit of an extreme example, but also, also the point, if you're not able to travel, if you're, if you're not able to meet, uh, uh, at the point you said, okay, I cannot go to Singapore, let's meet in Dubai, and uh, so, and, uh, which Dubai is, uh, is, is, getting, is getting more open now. Okay. So uh, that, as I said, uh, right now the, the effect is not being, uh, I don't think the effect has been, uh, has been very, uh, has not been very, very felt. Because it's uh, so far more or less all countries that uh, have taken the same approach, but uh, I'm seeing that some countries are are getting a bit uh, are starting to, to behave in a bit uh, a bit more open. And uh, if Italy countries don't don't catch up, is uh, for sure is going to affect them. Okay, um, we'll just move to Christian, who is is with us. Um, Christian, if you could just introduce yourself. Absolutely. Thank you for the. Uh Invitation. So my name is um, Chris or Christian Rang. I'm based on the west coast of Norway. It's supposed to be winter, but we have dark and rainy days. Um, but it's 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 going to turn into a beautiful winter here up in the, in the northern parts of of Europe. So I am um, I do three things that maybe um, will fit into this conversation. So first and foremost, I'm a strategy consultant. I do a lot of work with governments and, and ecosystems and big, and big companies around the world. Second, I'm a business school faculty. And third, I've been, over the last couple of years, building out a, a online strategy platform. So, you know, there were when, when, when COVID first hit, uh, pretty much back in, back in December, uh, early January, 
Um, there was a few people on our side that were sort of keeping an eye on it and saying, you know, if this happens and if this if this arrives. So so by March we had developed a couple of scenarios. None of them very good. Um, but scenario one was basically it'll be over by summer, which obviously didn't come to play. Um, scenario number two, um, it's it's going to go into a different sort of sleeping mode by the second half of the year. Um, but it's going to be linger. Uh, and scenario number three, which it's going to come storming back uh, as soon as we get into the fall, which of course has uh, largely happened. So over the past six months, Deborah, I think we've seen a lot of companies and governments also, I mean, just like, like Sunday was saying, um, trying to adapt and realize that it's going to be with us for a long time. And what do we do? And how do we get into a much more proactive uh, attitude? Uh, just on a closing note, one of my one of my clients in a big oil and gas company, he said, the whole COVID situation has basically accelerated ten years of timeline in six months for a big big oil and gas company. You know, changes that we would be expecting to see by twenty thirty has largely already unfolded themselves. So, so I think it's an interesting time, um, and I think that in this context, um, clusters and entrepreneurship really really matter. So countries and regions that do it well they'll come out stronger uh while countries and regions that maybe don't quite get it right will will suffer greatly like andrea said for the long term okay thank you christian and you're, you're absolutely right um the accelerated pace of development because of covid mm. and because um everyone has had to go digital uh, faster than they expected to is is mirrored frankly I see it in the vaccine um, and uh, you know we're in a situation where uh, in the world we still don't have an, a an AIDS or a HIV or a dengue vaccine mm -hmm. and yet in literally six months we have a COVID vaccine um, and that's because of I would say uh, the global cluster that's evolved of uh, the medical and scientific world. Um, and you could talk about this, you know, uh, uh, the, the Chinese making the uh, DNA of the COVID um, available to researchers very early on was the thing that created the um, development of three viable vaccines that we see uh, that will, I think, at this time next year, have made a significant difference to the way uh, we all operate. Um, bringing back travel, I believe, but travel of a different kind, travel of uh, for relationships, not for information sharing, um, relationship building. What do you guys have to say about that premise in say 2020 at the end of 2021 shalindra yeah uh, thank you uh, david um, in fact i would like to take uh, uh, the total scenario uh, from macro level to the micro level and restrict uh, my knowledge base which is india and uh, talking about uh, the challenges prior to that we need to understand what exactly is the covid situation as far as india is concerned the number of cases all India so far stands at 9.4 million uh, cases and the total of 8.8 .8 million have been recovered uh, from that. Mm -hmm. And there are presently 0. 0.44 or 45 million cases which are still active and the recovery rate has climbed up to 93.8%. Mm -hmm. So there are more number of uh, recoveries, almost 100%, uh, uh, close to 100% recoveries which are happening. And the mortality rate has gone down to 1.5%. Uh, the uh, interesting part is that uh, uh, the vaccine part of it, uh, which is getting introduced in the month of December, uh, the company manufactures uh, this particular vaccine in collaboration with Oxford, AstraZeneca, is based right here in my city, in Pune. And uh, we are preparing uh, for distribution of uh, these doses in the month of uh, December itself. In fact, our uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji had visited this uh, facility last Saturday uh, in our city. And then he's quite a bit about uh, this uh, program. And then we should be starting the vaccination beginning 
uh, uh, ending December, if not positively in the month of uh, January, the priority, the distribution cycle, everything has been uh, decided. So this being a situation, certainly uh, uh, if we really look at it from February, uh, March, to be precise, 24th of March, uh, we had the first lockdown till uh, this particular period in November. We have had several ups and downs and whatnot. Pre-COVID, we already had an economic beating uh, of uh, uh, quite a substantially 50% almost down. Um, and we were operating at roughly around 4.1% on uh, GDP. Or normally, the planned GDP was roughly around 7.5%. But then we came down to 4.1%. And after that, almost six months of no or virtually marginal activity of lockdowns, unlocks and whatnot. Uh, everyone have, uh, uh, of us have experienced that. You know, it brought the the, the uh, country virtually to a standstill or for that matter, low demand cycle. Now, the, uh, um, the liquidity uh, was very, very bad uh, in these situations. And mostly the MSMEs, the micro, small and medium scale enterprises have suffered uh, quite a lot. And these are a couple of challenges which uh, they are still yet to overcome. The demand generation has taken a beating in that, uh, as well as customers have put purchases on hold and postponed um, their decision making because nobody wants to really let go their cash uh, from their hand. And this GDP this year, what we say our fiscal year is between April to uh, March. So April, May, June, the first Q1, we had roughly around minus 23.9. And uh, in Q1, what we say, and uh, Q2, because of uh, the festivities, uh, the demand picked up and then we came down to came up to, say, minus 8.7. And we hope to do a complete recovery in Q3 and Q4 quarters. So by March 2021, we are expecting that we will come uh, on the plus side as far as GDP is concerned. The demand should be there. The manufacturing would have picked up almost 70 to 80 percent and whatnot. Now, there, while we are facing these challenges, naturally, there are so many opportunities which have opened up on this. And as we go along, we will keep discussing because at this moment, we would like to restrict it to the challenges. The manufacturing has certainly suffered a lot of challenges because it is a physical activity where you are required to have the workforce in place. And certainly, the administrative functions have been getting performed from work from home or Zoom meetings and whatnot. But then actual manufacturing has taken a lot of beating because we had a workforce problem. And now slowly 50 to 60% of the workforce is in position. And that is where the productions are getting picked up. And therefore, uh, the demands have uh, picked up because of our Indian festivities. And somehow the other, we are balancing this act, which is very, very difficult at this stage. Okay, thank you. Sunday. Yes. How do you think um, the your your vision for 2021 in terms of entrepreneurship and what's happening in your world? Yes, uh, for me it's very very important. We have to put something very very important in place. We have to be we have to be playing to win, not to survive. Very very important. We have to play to win, not to survive. The reason why I say that is because if you are struggling to survive, you won't be on your both feet. So the most important thing for us now is we saw the first hit of the COVID. We were unprepared. But the second COVID attack came now all over Europe, as you said before, Christian, that uh, people are on balance. So for me, it's very, very important the way we put ourselves, we position ourselves. We have to position ourselves with strategy. And the strategy should involve, should include everybody. It's very, very important because it's a kind of a teamwork. It's a teamwork. Nobody can do this on his own. So for me, for, 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 for everybody to keep moving, for everybody to keep, uh, keep on hitting the real gold is facing, we have to put some things in order. As you said, Uja, uh, some of the companies, you cannot work from home. It's absolute, absolute not possible. You need the workforce direct in the company. And most of the company have these difficulties nowadays because, because of these social distances. Most of those small firms, 
they don't have a big space to keep all those one, two, three meters away from each other. So the company has to rethink. Rethink is very, very important in this issue. We have to rethink. And very, very important, most of the firm have to re-strategic their plans. That means to invest in new technology. Also very important to invest in your workers because at this point we are in now, you need to save money. And how do you save money? You save money by dealing also, planning with your workers, try to make some innovation. I mean, when I say innovation is trying to redirect your plan because we saw now that online... Can you hear me? Something is noisy. Can you hear me? Kristen, can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can hear you very well. Ah, okay. I mean, uh, look at the online businesses. It's a boom. We have to we have to know something. In every crisis, it's also an opportunity. Because we as human beings, we are, we are being created to face every situation. So if something eats us uh, on our way at the first time, it also makes us very, very strong. So that's why we have to be mentally strong, mentally fit. And the government has to put a plan in places because we saw now that big firms get some, some, some helps from the government. Why the small firms are closing up? And you see the gaps between these two places. It's bringing some kind of uh, interruption. And you see people not happy one side. Here in Switzerland, I got a friend who says, okay, what I'm doing is to interact, to move with people. I need contact. And now, if I can't get the contact with these people, how do I live? And he's asking the government, why am I not getting compensation like the other big firms? So you saw many firms closing down, but the solution here is now we have to rethink. Rethink is very, very, very important at this stage. And the government has to also develop, very important, very uh, develop some of kind of a system whereby you have to have expertise in different kind of sectors. You have to ask expertise so that we, that will take care of the people in the rural areas, Take care of the small farms. Take care also uh, uh, of the uh, of the upcoming uh, workers, like in the third world country, like like the people selling water on the street. When you when you say they could not go out, how can they leave? So they have a lot of problems there. So for for me, it is very very important, and I think for everybody also to do this rethink. And we have to also manage most of our businesses. Try to do something like get it into this online online business also. It is very, very important. That means creating a section or a sector in your company if the, the capacity is there. And it's very, very important also for entrepreneurs to get in touch with their, with their customers. Very, very important to talk with their customer. In this time of this COVID and this pandemic, how do you think we can move on? Try also to get in touch with your bank and said, okay, if the need arises, will you be a kind of a help for me? So we have to do this now and not after the, because we have to rethink. We are living now. The pandemic is not going to be with us forever. It's going to end one of these days. Someday it's going to be ended. So I think the most important thing is to take fear out of the heart of everybody because fear is killing people. Fear, fear is killing people actually. Not even the pandemic. You see people now. You saw the social distances. When you're going on the street, I notice also that the elderly people uh, are somehow not really uh, uh, handled with, with care. I saw them when they come across you, they have to move to the right side or move to the left side because they thought they are a threat to you already. So I think that that kind of a thinking should move away from our our thought, our, our, our mind, we are one. And I think it's a kind of a corporate, we have to, it's like a football team. You need 11 players on the field and one person cannot get this job done. So I think it's a total collaboration whereby we need to work with each other, get ideas from each other, create ideas with each other and work one hand in hand with each other, how to help each other. Because you have to draw me, I have to draw you. It's a kind of a kind of help me, I help you. And there's an African saying that you have to cut your coat according to your size. 
Why this saying? It's very, very important. That means you have to restrategic your finance, your spending activities. You have to reduce it. And that's why it's very, very important also to take your workers along. You have to communicate with them. You have to talk with them. You have to plan with them because in doing that, they will also save you a lot of money and also exchanging views with each other will also help. And very, very important also their health situation has to be talking about. I think those are the most important thing we should try to put in places now and get this uh, pandemic or COVID out of our way. Because at the moment, mask, putting on the mask alone will not help this situation. The Vaseline, we will, the Vaseline is, thank God, is coming, but also the Vaseline will not kick out COVID. The most important thing is our individual uh, individual uh, approach to this, to this pandemic. It starts from Thank our you. home. Thank you. Thank you, Sunday. Thank you. Um, Andrea, uh, 2021, end of, end of 2021 lens for you for your business into Asia. I'm sorry, it's again. What's the, what lens do you have? What do you view do you have? on the end of 2021 are we back to normal is it a new normal where are we going etc well, my uh, my point that it's uh, the new normal will be very much like uh, the old normal in uh, <laughs> <laughs> no in my opinion it's uh, i mean there are, there are some, for sure there will be some changes for instance we'll be we will get much used in uh, to all to online meetings we will be it, Working from home is going to be much more, uh, much more acceptable, especially in, uh, especially in uh, old old style industries and uh, or in countries that uh, that have, have had uh, a more traditional uh, approach to the workforce, like made, like the one in um, like Italy, for instance, or also some Asian countries that uh, tended to have uh, a more traditional work culture rather than progressive, like in the US or. Uh, but I think it's in the end the, the moment we the moment the, the vaccine is uh, is uh, is widespread and uh, and approved and uh, and governments will lift the travel restriction I believe uh, we will be back to 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 a, to a normal to a normal situation probably business travel will um, will drop down a bit but it's uh, but I think that. Uh, uh, that in the in the in the recent years business travel was getting to a level which was getting a bit uh how you say uh not credible anymore that <laughs> it was getting a bit too much uh, business travel and so my, my hope is that it's uh let's say in uh after, after uh, next, next fall uh, things will be will be uh, i would say 80 percent uh, uh, back to, to how, how they were in the at the end of 20, 2019. Okay, thank you. I think one of one of the points. I tend to be optimistic. I'm sorry. Good, good. Well, I think optimis optimism is is uh, is critical for being able to get out of bed in the morning and move forward. Um, and I think a glass half full is uh, is really where we are at, rather than a glass half empty, in these very strange times. But I want to pick up on something that Sunday said, and I wanted to ask you, Christian, about this. And this was the thing that COVID has has identified uh, for us, or well, has really not not identified, but has really brought to the fore, is this sort of inequitable situation with very small businesses versus very large businesses, and um, entrepreneurship is a for the for better or worse. I always think of in a small business sense rather than a large business sense. Um, it, it, particularly at this time, although entrepreneurship, of course, exists everywhere. But um, how do clusters and uh, and groupings of industries have a positive impact? Or do they have a positive impact in these times where people can't actually meet together? How does that actually take place? No, thank you for the for the question, Deborah. And uh, I think the, uh, the the question is is a, is a great one. Um, so what what we've seen over the last six, seven, eight months is that you can split clusters into three groups, 
uh, you basically have shutting down, which is one group. You have barely getting by or barely surviving, to use Sunday's phrase. And then you have reinvention and then fast forward. So, so the first group, um, again, the large number of clusters around the world, they basically said, you know, we can't meet. We can't bring people together. Uh, we're probably going to lose a lot of revenue. Let's just close down while we still can. And it was basically not even a half empty glass. It was like there is no glass anymore. So we may as well just go. Um, it's, which, it happened. It happened. I mean, back, back in March, April, I had many of these conversations. They were terrible. Um, the second group is basically, yeah, yeah, we can get by. You know, we're all sort of holding our breath in that glass hoping to get back maybe by Christmas, maybe by January, maybe by February, because we have to be optimistic. But we're not really going to do anything until we can get back to people and then getting people face-to-face -face together, because after all, we yeah. all have to meet people. And, and this group surprises me a little bit, because there's so much you can do um, that this group is choosing not to do. Uh, but the last group, and I'm, right now, Deborah, I'm, I'm involved with probably... Uh, probably ballpark about between 20 and 30 cluster projects all around the world from Costa Rica to Brazil to Canada, Australia, Norway, Middle East, etc. Um, and many of them are really putting time and energy into, okay, we have not even a new normal, but a very fluid normal. So how do we reinvent ourselves? How do we help our members? How do we help our industries? How do we expand growth, for example, in China? How do we help members accelerate digital, digital transformation? And we're seeing that these, these uh, you know, let's call them thriving clusters, uh, they can get a lot of work done and have a strong economic impact. Because one of my observations has been that even though the world is largely in lockdown, you know, economically, we're all doing pretty okay, you know, by and large. A surprising number of industries have proven very resilient. Um, and a surprising number of industries have proven to be, you know, just booming through the roof. Um, we should all have bought Netflix and Zoom uh, stocks back in March. That would have been very wise. Um, so I think that as we're looking ahead, um, there's always going to be a large group that's struggling, uh, there's going to be a large group that is kind of sitting and hoping and waiting. And then there's a third group, which I hope to see just growing, which is really able to find a lot of new and exciting opportunities. Okay. Um, very interesting. And I think uh, good to be able to define the groups. Uh, we're obviously not talking about the micro SMEs, because uh, micro small businesses, I mean, because frankly, they exist on a different level um, and exist within a different framework. But something I should have probably asked you guys to do, and Christian, I'll start with you, uh, is to define what you think a cluster is. So, so this, is, of course, is, is a, a big question that they can have many different angles and all angles will be valid. So it, I'll give you two different definitions. The first definition is that clusters is a natural part of business. So if we take uh, you know, our friend from Italy, um, in Italy there are vineyards. And around those vineyards, uh, a lot of natural business partners emerge from, from the bottle makers to the label makers to the exporters to the marketing agencies. Uh, so you have a naturally emerging group of companies that are just co uh, collaborating around, you know, a physical vineyard. The, the second approach, the more modern approach, if you will, is that clusters are groups of company that are purpose-built uh, coming together. They have a legal organization. This organization has members. These members will both compete and collaborate to typically grow or expand that industry within that cluster. Uh, one example would be uh, Canada's ocean uh, supercluster, which has brought a lot of different ocean-related companies together to expand Canada's ocean economy. Uh, so naturally emerging clusters and then purpose-built clusters. And are there others? Well, again, the question of, of definitions. So I would say that what, what people call uh, clusters, meaning um, a random collection of companies that happen to be in the same vicinity, uh, would technically fall into the definition of ecosystems. 
right. uh, although that's more of an academic uh, dis- discussion. Um, if you take, if you look at look at uh, Silicon Valley, so Silicon Valley, by most definitions, is not a cluster; it is an ecosystem because there are so many different types of companies and types of industries overlapping and intersecting. Uh, if you go to the greater Boston area, where you have the life science cluster, so so theories and researchers they looked at the greater Boston area for for decades and said there is a uh, life science, health science supercluster because. There's such a high density of very specific companies to that uh, to that industry domain. Um, it, it is really a, a, a question of, of definitions and, and uh, academic uh, nuances. I think what matters is companies collaborating to do things to compete better than they could have done just by themselves. Uh, and that can happen right. in Mongolia. It can happen in... Uh, South Africa, it can happen in Mauritius, it can happen uh, in Nigeria. Sometimes it's government initiated top down, sometimes it's industry led bottom up, uh, but more and more clusters are emerging around the world because it matters to national and regional competition. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Andrea, what is your view on this cluster scenario? How do you interpret it? No, it's really interesting what. Uh, Christian just said that the, the, the difference yeah. between cluster and ecosystem. I never really, I never really, really look at it that way. And uh, my, as, a, as a Christian said, I'm, I'm Italian, so I always look at um, cluster, cluster economy as a way for companies to, for small companies to, um, to, to get together and achieve uh, achieve economy mm-hmm. economy of scale. It uh, usually integrating the supply chain or. Uh, or integrating the value chain. So I always look at cluster uh, in this way. I never thought about ecosystem, which is uh, which is actually quite uh, quite on point. Meaning that places like uh, say Silicon Valley, that the Boston greater area, or uh, even Singapore, when it comes to um, when it comes to venture capital and uh, innovation in Southeast Asia, they are definitely ecosystem. So places which uh, which they act as a sort of a of a new 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 neutral sort of a neutral. Um, Neutral playground where, where all the actors of the all, all, all the actors of the of the, of the ecosystem can meet and uh, collaborate and and compete. Okay, so we've talked. We don't have very much longer together, I'm afraid, um, but we have talked about a, an interesting wide range of of issues around entrepreneurship and around clusters today and I, I thank you Christian for the definition of clusters versus ecosystems I, I had never really quite understood that there was a difference um, and I've never really understood what what clusters meant uh, Shailindra I know that your uh, business is in fact your business structure from what you described is indeed a cluster of companies with a with a group uh, that is connected um, uh, of a group of companies that are connected and that uh, is actually family operated across the board. Um, I just want to ask you a couple of things for the, for our audience. What's the last uh, business book you read that you really enjoyed, Shailendra? Actually, the, uh, uh, these are the days uh, where you have to be a little different than others, and yep. that is where. Uh, you know, you, we have been discussing this, that innovation is something which will keep you going in yeah. everything that you do, whether it is in process, whether it is in manufacturing, whether it is in product, whether it is in your behavior, strategies, visions, and whatnot. Everywhere you have to have innovation as a part of your <coughs> life. And this is where I had, I encountered on a book uh, called Innovator's DNA, which is uh, written by uh, three authors. So one is uh, Jeff Dyer, Al Gregenson and then uh, another one, Christensen. Uh, and uh, this really gives out uh, five uh, skills. You have. You need to master We're these five skills. We're nearly finished, Shalindra. I'm so yeah. sorry. Are we going to cut us off or we can stop? It's the time for us to finish. But thank you for that tip. Uh, we still got, we're still on board. So, um, uh, Andrea, business book. I agree. I, I, I try to avoid business books. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> I, well, book. Uh, book. Okay. I'm, right, right now, I'm reading Tuesday with Morris. That is the book that uh, I totally missed out when it was out. And, uh, uh, okay. 
I'm enjoying quite a bit. And then before that, I read um, I read two books by by an Indian, an Indian uh, American Indian doctor who writes. Uh, the one is a history of genes, and the history of the genetic research, which I guess you can count as business. And uh, the other one was um, the emperor of, the emperor of maladies, the, a biography of cancer, which I think uh, both books were quite in uh, were quite in uh, you say in line with the times we are living. Wow. 